like if we if we were totally secular, then we would continue our life in Miami Beach, or in Brooklyn, and not come here. No, that's not true. Of course. Why would why would we gonna come here? Because people that are anti-Semitic don't care if you're secular or not. They'll still be anti-Semitic against you. Have you been to? I, I, you, I, well, today it's you different. Know but I'm saying were? I'm saying that when it's Israel, 50, I'm just saying that when ago? Israel started being a secular Jew in another country. Yeah, but why not mean? go to Uganda? Why not go somewhere else? The whole the whole impetus to go here was a reversion to the place of the Bible, the place of history, the place where we're from. So it was a secularized version of the religious of the religious history. In the I, religious know, I, text. I mean, this, I think um, Palestine worked better because of the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire and the ability of the British to administer to there it. There were many that, other options. There was Kenya, there was Uganda. I'm aware there Palestine were options, did but, work. But Palestine, but you see, you see, this is exactly my point. You see that? That's exactly my point. Yeah. You hyper secularized <laughs> something, which at the time, if you listen to the Balfour Declaration and the British people who were involved in, 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 in bringing Jews back to Palestine, they weren't like, yeah, this really makes sense because like, it's technically the place in the Ottoman Empire that we can put the Jews in. They were like, no. They were like, we read the Bible. People like Arthur Balfour, people like, 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 um, like Lloyd George. They, I don't think any, I don't think Balfour wanted to bring, I don't think any of Europe wanted to bring the Jews to Palestine. I don't think he just wanted to push them out of Europe. And that was the you, are, you are you think I'm completely factually wrong? wrong. Okay. Not, not, not a little, a lot. Because, because they, just read their, their testimonies. The, the Bible aspect of it was a huge part of their life. But Balfour was a guy whose mother read him the Bible every night. He knew it by heart. He thought about, he was thinking about Christian restorationism. He was thinking about helping Jews get back to the Holy Land, as was promised in the Bible, and to amend for also the stuff that Christians did to the Jews. Those were both of the main reasons. There was a third reason, which was to also help hold on to the Suez Canal and, and British interests. But the major interest was, was, was biblical. That's, but see, my, my point exactly. You see that? So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's Alpha like, words were pretty I anti-Semitic early on. I don't know if we say Christian. When we say anti-Semitic helping, is when not, you say, that's not a big category. Everybody's a little bit anti-Semitic. That's a big, that's, there's a lot of people who are like, are like, are used to some ideas that the Jews are this and the Jews are that. That's not like a big category in my mind. People it are was like, a huge, that's why Jews were bankers and they worked with money and everything. It's because they couldn't work as carpenters. They couldn't work as whatever in the city. So that's, they had to, I, that's yeah. what, that, you're making my point, which is it's a common, it's a common reaction, anti-Semitism. It's a common thing. And so, okay, so, so, so he was, a, you know, he doesn't necessarily like Jews personally, but, but he felt, felt that it was the right thing to do to help the Jews come back. By the way, once he, once he got close to Weizmann, he became a very pro, pro-Jewish, pro, pro, he was a big proto-Zionist. He was a big proto-Zionist. That's what it was. He helped create us. It wasn't just, coming here to this land is not just some kind of technicality. To say that is absurd. It really is. It's this place, the coming back to this place has deep roots in our history, which you could, you could take the God aspect out of it if you want, if, if, it, if, it, you know, if it works better for you. But to disconnect it from the history of the Jewish people and the Bible is, it's silly. Well, it's the history silly. is, you can have the historical justification without it being religious at all, like you said, right? I, first thing, I don't need any justification. That's the, 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 I'm saying for, right for the motivation. Then, yeah, right? motivation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Because uh, so, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. when you read Balfour, yeah, he was quite Christian, and that, that was that influenced his thinking. But uh, all the arguments he makes when he's writing about it at the time, it's all it's all very like secular argumentation. Yeah, right? so, because so of that people like, like because Stephen of history, can, yeah. uh, can can read it and, and 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 take to it because you you know people don't always like when you mix in religion. But if you if in you, the nineteen in the early nineteen hundreds. I wouldn't say it's mixing in religion. It's more like because you think he religion was is like a, a major pro-bio role, person. Right? Let's just get that. Let's mm-hmm. just get that straight. That's a fact. Fact or not? Yeah. Fact. Yes. Okay. Good. He was a pro-bio person. He wanted to see the Jewish people restored to this land. When we come back to this land, this is not just a technicality. It is where we're from. This is where our history is from. And the Bible, if you want to secularize it, is also a book of Jewish history in this land. Okay. And 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 for us to be back in this place, Ephrat is the biblical name of Bethlehem. Bethlehem is Beit Lechem Ephrata. It has an ancient name, and here is that town, okay? I look out here, I see Jaffa, I see Hebron, I see Jerusalem. These are places that are mentioned in my ancient text, in my ancient language. It's very meaningful to me, you understand? It's, it's very meaningful to us here. That's why, that's why we're here. Now, I, I have to tell you honestly, I was just in Miami, mm-hmm. I was just in Brooklyn, and let me tell you, those places are fabulous. They are. I they live really in Miami are. Beach. I live next to huge. Dan is <laughs> Dan lives in a huge Miami uh, beach community of Jewish people. Yeah, Fabulous. Yeah. And you know what? I like Miami a lot. And I could easily live in Miami and be successful there. The only reason I'm here is because of the connection to, to a historical consciousness uh, or, uh, and a spiritual consciousness as well. Here's a question. Um, you, know, um, you know when uh, Egypt was taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood? 
And despite all of their texts and their speeches and their rhetoric about rivers of the sea, they come in and one of the first things they do is they uphold Camp David from 79, right? They uphold peace. So, or like Hamas calling for global jihad, but then failing to get the kind of response that they expected from Israeli Arabs or uh, even a lot of people here. So do you think these are kind of like examples of uh, secular reasoning and secular motivation overriding the religious one, or do you see it differently? It's not just secular. Sometimes some Arabs come to the conclusion, religious or secular, that the Jews aren't going to be defeated, let's make peace with them, let's live with them, right? Like, like there is an element of the Jewish, of the, of the Middle East story, which they say, okay, you know, the Jews, we've made a war with them for 100 years, it's been fruitless, so let's wake up and snap out of it. So I think that's what the UAE did. I think that's what Saudi Arabia may be moving towards doing. It's like, you know what? It's a fruitless 100-year war. At the end, the Jews are our cousins, mm -hmm. ethnically, linguistically, religiously, they are related to us. And we might as well just stop this pointless war and move ahead and normalize. And that's, I think, a very healthy instinct. Yeah, but you can read it religious, you can find religious justification for it as well. You know, uh, there, are, there are verses in the Quran that seem to indicate that the Jewish people have a right to this land. So, yeah. Has, you know, um, has equals? Well, nobody's equal in this region. Yeah, right? but that's what I mean. You're talking religiously, though, because when you say they uh, went to they are not going to. I'm not looking for to there, the right? Arabs to accept me as an equal or not. I have my own state. Yeah, but we're talking about what well, they think religiously. Yeah. They think that they have the, the 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 right and chosen religion, and that Israel is a little bit of a pain because it's a shiny Jewish state in the middle of their Middle East. And so it's hard for them to swallow that. that. That's why I say when you say they wake up and snap out of it with normalization, to me that sounds like secular overriding religious. You could say it that way, or you could say at some point common sense reaches you, and then you find religious rationales to make, to make common sense After the fact, be, yeah. be, be the policy.